Hello and welcome. Please pause this video and try the problem on your own. Let's start together by reading it. It says write the value of x in the equation below. So I notice there's, there's an x here in our denominator of our fraction. It's the missing piece of this equation. I see 3 to the negative third equals 1 over x. So, so if 1 over x equals 3 to the negative third, if I can just rewrite 3 to the negative third in a different way, I can find out what x equals. So let's do that. What does 3 to the negative third refer to? Well, the negative in the exponent refers to division. We always start with 1. This is an important concept when we're setting these up. To so start with the number 1, then we divide by our base. This is our base. This is our exponent. 3 is the base. So we divide by our base the, the absolute value times... Oh, sorry, how do I say this? You divide by the base right, as many times as the exponent tells you. And the way you read the exponent is saying, well, this is negative 3, so take the absolute value of that. The absolute value of negative 3 is just 3, and absolute value is just distance from 0. It's saying, hey, if you've got negative 3, right, here's 0, here's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is saying, hey, how far is that from 0? What is that distance right there? And that is a distance of 3. Anyway, that's, that's my way of saying you divide by the base three times. So if you want to know how many times you're dividing, find the absolute value of your negative exponent, and that will tell you. So here the absolute value of negative 3 is 3. So I divide by 3 three times. So um, anyway, what do we do with this information? Well, there's a couple ways to think about this that students are usually comfortable with. Um, first of all, they start with 1 and divide by 3. They go from left to right. They pair just as you would in the order of operations. 1 divided by 3 is a third. And then we rewrite everything else. Divided by 3. Divided by 3. And you pair it up again. A third cut in three pieces is a ninth. right? A ninth divided by 3 then is our last step. And 1 ninth divided by 3. If you divide ninths into three groups, you get 20 sevenths. Right? Here, you're just tripling your denominator each time. So x could be 27. Now another way of thinking about it, another way of thinking of what x would have to equal, is to maybe rewrite this in terms of multiplication. You can always rewrite division in terms of multiplication. So we could rewrite this. And we could write 1 times a third, times a third, times a third. That's because instead of dividing by 3, we can multiply by a third. That gets you the same result. If you take, try it out, I mean, you could take 30, divide it by 3 and you get 10, or take 30 and multiply it by a third, and you'll still get 10. It works. Um, just pick any number that's a multiple of 3 to see easily why this happens. Um, anyway, so uh, once we set this up, what you can see is, to multiply here, 1 over 1 is really our first number, multiply all of our numerators, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, and that's 1. Then our denominator is 1 times 3 times 3 times 3 is also 27. So that's another way of thinking about it. And you might recognize that 27 is just 3 to the third. So we can write it this way, which brings me to my, my personal way of looking at this, and something I probably learned in school myself. I notice here in the end that 3 to the negative third just equals 1 over 3 to the third, and this is always true. What's always true? Well, if you take a number and raise it to a negative base, right? negative exponent, excuse me, it's going to equal 1 over the same base to a positive exponent here. In other words, we flip the sign of the exponent and it goes into the denominator. You can see this as written as a law of exponents. You can write it in different ways. Let's say it's a to the negative b, right? That would equal 1 over a to the b. This is always true, right? As long, of course, that uh, this power is not 0, right? We can't have 0 in our denominator. All right, hope this helped.